Andy Raymond unfiltered last week, ladies and gentlemen. You better not be wearing pants because after we thwack, whack, bum shellacked you in the 220, I'd expect nothing other than turning up in just undies today. Welcome aboard. Undies that have been being generous. Uh, first New Zealand beats <laughs> Australia, then the budget comes in from over here. So I feel like I've been well and truly used <laughs> as an inflatable toy this week. <laughs> <laughs> he joins us every Wednesday. The inflatable toy that is Andy Raymond unfiltered. Welcome back. That's one of the nicer things I've been called. Hello, Marty, how are you? I'm good, mate. Uh, look, I'm even better that we bellied it to the palms, which means you're going to get knocked out of your own tournament. Boo-hoo. There's 195 countries in the world and 194 last night were cheering for New Zealand <laughs> and the only ones celebrating this morning are, are England. But uh, um, I think they're going to be really difficult to beat the Poms and, and, and that upsets me, that infuriates me because there's nothing better in world sport than beating the Poms at anything. And, absolutely. And here's me last night and I, I know that I have now evoked the karma gods because here am I, not not at all upset about losing to England and here we're about to go and play them at rugby at Twickers which is the worst place in the world to lose anything with the Hooray Henrys and, so, and I'm, I actually feel I'm starting to feel a little awkward about it at the same time the only reason we don't want you in there is because when if, if we got to meet you again in the tournament well we might as well wear no pants mate because you hurt us every time it's, it's, a, it's an odd little triangle of results isn't it when you look at uh, Australia New Zealand and England and that has been the case for a number of years in all different formats of the game when New Zealand's been really powerful uh, at a test match level they've dominated the Australians but they've been beaten by the Poms and it almost reverses at different times I thought there was a couple of areas for concern last night for New Zealand and I know you're travelling nicely, and I know the results look good, but I thought there was a couple of areas of concern. I I thought you're a little bit submissive with mm. with, with the bat in yep. hand. Yep. Obviously, Phillips did a wonderful job. Kane did what he you no know, Kane did what he had to do, but forty off forty playing at, at number four in a game like that. Look, I'd I'd expect more. Um, I'm a huge Nisham fan, and he started with that wonderful boundary, and I thought, oh, beauty, here we go. But by and large, there wasn't... We'll take Phillips out of the equation. And he got there dropped, mate. A, he got dropped, remember, early, like he did in the last that, innings. Yep. Yeah, <clears throat> ex exactly. Um, but there wasn't that aggression that I think you need to be, um, you know, a genuine World Cup chance. So I, I think there's a couple of areas of concern... I thought the Poms were terrific. I really did. In particular, bowling um, and bowling with a heap of pressure on them. I thought Rashid and Wokes. Wokes is just that guy that continues to fly under the radar for me. Really is. I, I he's a, a talented cricketer, and uh, I think they've. You know, as much as it ha I hate saying this, mm. I think they've got their timing right. And in timing in the short form. Uh, elimination competitions is, uh, well, timing's more important than form. Speaking of form, mate, Andy Raymond unfiltered with us, and that's the man's handle on all the social media and everything else, people, and we'll let you know what he's got lined up for you this week. But, uh, you know, we heard a text come in saying, can you please ask Andy about Steve Smith? Is he still the best batsman in Australia across all three formats? What's going on there exactly? Why can't he play in this tournament? Why don't they want him in this tournament? <laughs> It's not why can't he play, it's why don't they want him. And I'm still scratching my head. I'm, I'm not a huge T20 fan. I get it that it's entertainment. I get that it's exciting. Yes, I'll watch it. I'm the traditionalist. I, I love my test match cricket. And I, I think we, we can be too quick to judge players in a T20 environment uh, over one or two games when it can change so quickly. It's almost like rugby sevens. It, yeah, it good can point. just change so quickly depending on what day it is and what colour the clouds are. I, I cannot believe Steve Smith isn't in there. Australia's gone with you know a top six or a top seven that are all Glenn Maxwell clones or David Warner clones. They're, they're aggressive, they're huge run rates um, and, and they play a similar game. 
Well, every couple of games, you need that Kane Williamson or that Steve Smith, the anchor player, just to push the singles, to rotate the strike, to keep the scoreboard and let the guy at the other end be the hero and hit the fours and the sixes. I I think it's amazing he's not in there. Uh, Stunning, actually. Look, I just think is that, you know, um, form is temporary class is permanent thing. Look, the guy intimidates. Yep. When he bats, every other every other team is thinking, oh, he could be a worldie here. And just for that alone, you know, the mental disintegration side of it, it just makes no sense to any of us, mate. I'll take you back to the years where the great Sir Richard Hadley was was probably in his twilight years. And, and there were questions at different times from different uh, sections of the media should Sir Richard still have an automatic place in the New Zealand test side? Yes, um, yes, yes. Do you, rem- do you remember that? Yeah. It, it, it was crazy talk. Yeah, but totally. the answer was always, yes, yes. he has to be yes, there. Yes, yes. Because he's the leader, he's the intimidator, he's the babysitter, and when everything else turns ugly, he's the one you turn to, and that's that's what Steve Smith's role is. So that's it's really interesting. Interesting dynamic. Rugby League World Cup. Now, we've been discussing it today, mate. Brody Retallick uh, for rugby. I know it's a different topic, but he cops a two-match ban and a coaching course for that tackle against Japan. Yep. You've got Warrior Hargraves, who goes in with a big swing and arm. It hits the chair, smacks against the head. He tries to decapitate the guy. He gets one game. Andy, what is it about rugby league that the sport does not understand CTE, head knocks, concussion, this after the, even Paul Green? It just seems like it's a lawsuit waiting to happen. We've got new laws coming in for kids, uh, intermediate, schoolboy, and everything under professional level next year where the, the, the tackle has been lowered um, to the to the sternum around the belly. With, with rugby league, it's still all about the big hits and all of that kind of stuff. And I just wonder, what is no one aware of the potential of a nasty lawyer who could take the game to the cleaners here? It's crazy because it seems rugby league is going in the opposite direction to which the community is and what is better for everyone. Um, The fact that Jared has a history, let's take that out of it for a moment. Let's judge this on one incident alone. For me, it's a four to six weeker on, on, on this one incident alone. If you want to load in and take into account his previous record... You know, he might be sitting out a couple of months. I was stunned the fact he is missing one game. And look, he's not really missing a game. He's missing a quarterfinal against Fiji. And in respect to our Fijian friends, New Zealand are going to win that by 40 points. And he'll be fresh for the semi final, which means everything against Australia. So there is. There is not a huge penalty being no, suffered by, no. by Big Jared here. And considering what we know now about CTE and the way we should be going, it makes decisions like these even more baffling. You know, I've got a text in here I want to read to you, and um, sure. you know, and I, look, I, I love everyone that texts us, and this is what we have on this program, mate. We're open to the opinions, and we just want to debate stuff. And Big Bob has texted, and he says, I can't believe my ears, lads, in regards to the league head knocks. These young guys that play are keen for the combative nature. As long as they've signed a waiver, what's the problem? If the player is unaware of the risks, then you have a point. But I think these guys want to prove their bravado. Now, a couple of things on that. I think he's right in what he says, but in that case, I think these men have to be protected from themselves. Would you agree? Yeah, I, 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 I agree with, um, with, with both points Big Bob's made. Uh, I'd love to see everyone sign a waiver. And and let's be honest, it's going to get to that for any combat sport. It It is going to get to that whether we like it or not. That is going to happen. Uh, Yes, they do know what they are getting themselves into. But yes, we've got to save them from themselves. I'll I'll take you back a, a generation of two or three. And here's a couple of guys. David Gillespie, Wayne Pierce, Mark Graham... Uh, guys that could tackle you around the chest or around the waist and buckle and bruise you more than any high shot ever. These guys made 22 tackles a game only because other players avoided them. That's what being tough is. Being tough isn't putting your arm out and collecting a bloke on the chin. So I think there's a form of education and tackle technique that has to return to the game because when we were taught all those years ago, Marty, you were tackle, you were told to tackle 
around the hips, around the top of the legs, and then slide down and slide down. Where's it come in then? Where's this big, aggressive, macho, chest-to-chest bollocks come into it then, mate? Trying to slow the game down is what it is and trying to get yourself into a position to wrestle the guy on the ground. Okay. And that uh, mm. that is the, the black flag and the black mark against the game at the moment. It starts by basically bear-hugging your opponent chest-on-chest and then rolling him over onto the ground where you're in a dominant position that slows the play, the ball down, and your team gains the ascendancy. See, for a man who loves rugby, if you're listening, audience, I hope you're hearing this. This is a man who absolutely lives and breathes and loves his rugby league, and I can hear the concern in your voice. What have we got on the show this week, mate? Mate, big week. It's uh, it's actually been a really enjoyable week. We've got a dream team from the great Ryan Girdler. He names his best ever 13. Tonight, we're putting the spotlight on Zach Lomax with a series of short interviews. They are terrific, both on and off field. And this weekend, we're having our weekend session with Zach Wolford of Canberra Raiders fame. It is a beauty. All right. ARU is Andy Raymond Unfiltered. We thank you so much for your time. Adore you, and we'll be back again talking next week.